Hey, good Wednesday morning, everybody. BAM weather meteorologist Brett Waltz here, giving you a winter weather Wednesday forecast update, guys. Going to touch on when we may expect uh, wintry weather to pick up as we go throughout the rest of the fall and into the winter season, guys. Uh, also have an update for November. An important December update, uh, but before we get to that, I do want to at least briefly touch on some severe weather and heavy rain in the central United States. Guys, it's been one of the driest Octobers on record. Uh, we will see a change coming as we close the month and into the month of November, which leads me to the second important bullet point today, which is the November Outlook update. And then signals were seen for the end of November and their implications on the December pattern ahead. Uh, real quick, I wanted to be sure to remind you all that our winter webinar will be on November 13th, two weeks from today. Go to bamwx.com slash webinar to sign up for that. If you can't make it to the live uh, update at 11 a.m. on November 13th, be sure to still sign up and you will be sent the recording in your email. Uh, we'll also have an update on the South American ag weather season down there as well. And then the day after this, we will be having our in-person BAM winter weather workshop where we're going to go over the uh, the challenges and the difficulties of weather prediction. Of course, we'll touch on our outlook as well, similar to what we did in the webinar. But most importantly, with this winter weather workshop, uh, we're going to talk about how you can incorporate these outlooks, both in the extended range, like what we talk about today, and in the short term, into your daily decisions, into your daily operations? How can you actually take this critical information and implement it to make your operation more efficient? That's what we're going to be talking about. It's going to be super beneficial. Uh, maximum occupancy is 110 seats, and I know it's filling up fast, so be sure to uh, click the link that we have attached here in the comments of this video on YouTube and sign up for that winter weather workshop. If you can't make it, uh, feel free to email me. My email is on the last slide, and we'll be sure to send you the recording. All that being said, guys, let's get into the forecast, and I want to start out with record warmth today. All those circles that you see across the Great Lakes, the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and even down into parts of Texas, uh, record-breaking warm high temperatures today cooler further off to the west. You can see that uh, cooler temperatures in the Mountain West and the Northwest Plains starting to feel a little bit more like fall and maybe even some winter out there. But in terms of the eastern U.S., not a major change on the horizon. In fact, you can see as we go into early next week for your election day on Tuesday, uh, going to continue to run much warmer than normal and more record-breaking warmth possible from the Ohio Valley down through the Deep South. With this, in the gradient in temperatures with cooler air west, warmer air east, we're going to see severe weather uh, rise up once again. Uh, and here's a look at the outlook that the team put together today for parts of the central plains. Uh, highly likely that there will be some severe weather, including the Kansas City metro area today. To the right here, I've attached the tornado outlook for today. That hatched yellow area is where there's a 10% probability of a tornado within 25 miles of any spot. And so uh, all modes of severe weather certainly possible with this, but also that tornado threat that we'll need to keep an eye on, especially across eastern parts of Kansas. The system and then a couple of other systems that we're going to deal with here over the next seven days are going to produce a lot of rain. This is a huge deviation from what we've had for the vast majority of October. It's been a very, very quiet month for the United States as a whole. Uh, but you can see these orange and red areas on the map, two to three inches plus of rain over the next seven days, certainly going to be making up for lost time across the central portion of the country with these systems as we move forward, which again, a huge deviation from October. In fact, you know, I'd argue that for the U.S. as a whole, probably the driest October ever. Uh, if not, it's very, very close to that. All those dark brown colors you see are top five to record, driest on record so far for the month of October. And so again, just a very dry month overall, but that is changing ahead. And guys, you can kind of see why. When you get cooler air west and warmer air east in between, you tend to get very active and that's exactly what's happening. The next seven days, the eastern half of the U.S. is substantially warmer than normal. And if we go out through November 6th to 12th, that doesn't really change. And so this is a setup that's going to favor, you know, mountain west snow events out there. Uh, but 
a lot of rain in the central part of the country, more severe weather opportunities, and warmer than normal temperatures further off to the east. If we take a look at the percent of normal rainfall in this same time frame, continues to be active in the central part of the country, a little bit drier to the north up in parts of the far northern plains and the Canadian prairies. So then I think the big question is for the month of November, does this persist? Is this a persistent pattern as we go throughout the rest of the month? Looking at some signals for mid to late November, we do see signs that there can be a change. Now, I think the big question here is how much of a change are we looking at? You know, I, I don't see strong signals that we are dealing with a notable blast of Arctic air. I do think it can get cooler. I think that it can even be cooler than normal in the east at times. If we look at some of these signals, this top left image here, that's our global wind, favors cooler air mid to late November. 2002, a very good tropical force analog, warmer west, cooler east. And if you take a look at the Southern Oscillation Index, that's just the pressure between Darwin and Tahiti, tends to help us time out cold fronts, certainly favors warmth out through the middle part of the month, but maybe some cooler risk developing the back half of November. And so with all that in mind, you know, I, I think that there's the opportunity here mid-November to get cooler. Now, I don't think it's record-breaking cold. I don't even necessarily think it's notable cold, but seasonable to cooler temperatures for the eastern half of the country, I, I think certainly plausible as we go through the middle part of the month. And, and if you take a look at precip, maybe a little bit wetter than normal to the east, I, I wouldn't 100% rule out more winter weather risk developing uh, in the eastern and northeastern part of the United States as we go through this time frame. It's not 100% out of the question. Now, keep in mind this time of the year, you're naturally not going to have a ton. There's not going to be a lot of opportunities, but I wouldn't completely rule out some mischief in here as we go through the middle part of November. I think the issue, though, for the month of November as a whole is how warm it's going to be to start the month. And if you take a look at some of the uh, closest La Nina analogs right now, they're very warm. They average out very warm across the eastern two-thirds of the country. They're also more active in the central part of the United States, which we are certainly seeing over the next 15 days or so. I think given the fact that we're not forecasting notable cold for the mid middle part of November, it's going to make it very difficult for us to, uh, you know, average out cooler than normal for the month of November as a whole, given how warm the month is going to start. And so, you know, overall, I, I think November can average out warmer than normal. Yes, there's a change in there. The timing of that change and the intensity of that change will determine how warm we end up looking. Uh, but right now, I think it's going to be difficult to you know, get rid of all of the warmth uh, in terms of the averages to start out the month of November. I also think there's the potential, and we'll talk more about it here in a second, that the very end of November, last five days or so-ish, give or take, could also warm back up. And that is something we'll need to keep in mind. In terms of precip, a lot of this, again, driven by the start of the month. It's going to be very active to start out the month. Uh, in fact, you know, November is one of the drier months of the year historically. Two to three inches for the central part of the country is normal for the month. And a lot of these areas are going to be getting that to start the month. And so I do think uh, many areas average out wetter than normal across parts of the central plains into the Midwest and the Ohio Valley may be trending a little bit drier, especially across the central U.S. as the month goes along. Now, with all that in mind, let's talk about December. Uh, I wanted to look at the same analogs that we use for November and, and also factor in some of our oceanic analogs as well, because I do think that will be a factor in things as we go into the month of December. These are warmer than what our previous outlooks have been but they are still cooler than normal for much of the central and western U.S. It's not a, a torched December type of look. With that being said, I am concerned that late November and early December could be very warm. And the reason for that is if you look at our tropical forcing and you look at the MJO, there's the potential that we could go through phases 4, 5, 6, as we go into the end of November and the first third or so of December, let's say. These are the warmest phases into December. Phase four, phase five, phase six. All of these are very, very warm across much of the eastern half of the country. Now, 
that does open the door that the back half of December could be colder because phase seven, eight, and one, which if we were to keep moving with this, we're getting really far out there now, but if we were to keep moving with this, it would open the door up for the back half of December to be a little bit colder. And so I, I think the takeaway here, guys, is, you know, December could be a, a, a tale of two months where we could start out very warm and maybe end a little bit on a colder note. I don't think it's locked in necessarily super warm or super cold right now. I, I think where we average out in terms of on the warmer side or the colder side depends on La Nina. A and it, it depends on where exactly the coldest water set up. If you remember about a month ago, we talked about an east base versus a central base La Nina. This 120 west is kind of the line I'm looking at. If the coldest waters are west of it, December will be warmer. If the waters are east of it, December will be colder. To be honest, right now, we're right on the line. It could go either way. I still think it's kind of a warmer start, maybe cooler in type of idea. But whether the warmth wins out or the cold wins out will depend on this. And it's something we're going to have to watch carefully over the next several weeks. With that in mind, here's how we average things out the best that we could at this distance. You know, I, I think a warm start to the month in the east probably keeps the eastern 30 U.S. warmer than normal for the month as a whole, but cooler air can bleed in with time, especially for the western and central part of the country. With this type of a setup, especially going into the holiday season, you know, this is an area that could be uh, pretty active in terms of winter weather. You know, this would be the area that I would target right now. I am not as excited about the East Coast based off how things are looking at this distance. Still a long way to go, but this is our best idea as things stand right now in terms of the December idea. Uh, guys, that's all I have for today's forecast. If you have any questions, of course, uh, be sure to drop them in the comments or reach out to us on the Clarity platform if you have access. Uh, guys, appreciate your time. Uh, be sure to, again to sign up for that winter webinar and our winter weather workshop in Indianapolis, Barkersville. Here's a look at that again. Uh, again, this is November 14th, 5 to 8 p.m. If you can't make it live uh, or you can't make it in person, be sure to reach out to me. We'll be happy to help. Thanks, guys, and have a great day.